Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, Homeschool Life Coach at Capturing the Charmed Life. I'm dedicating this season of the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast to the overwhelmed homeschool mama because you'd rather be clear, confident, and satisfied. So this episode is going to be a unique episode, a universal episode dedicated to every mom that doesn't live in a cardboard box. If you have a kitchen counter stacked with dishes, P.S. I do as I record this. If you have a storage room filled with Rubbermaid containers of baby toys and baby clothes and Christmas gift wrap and warranty guidebooks, if you've got a kitchen fridge that needs to be cleaned or an oven that hasn't seen a scrub for years, then this episode is for you. On today's episode, we're going to discuss your house, your homeschool house. I'll assume that you are listening to this episode as you are folding laundry, washing dishes, making a meal. Maybe you're on a walk to go get something from the mailbox, but most likely you're doing some sort of tidying in your home. Once upon a time, I met Marie Kondo. Okay, I didn't meet Marie Kondo, but I did meet her book. Perhaps you are one of the three million that have purchased her book too. Marie Kondo has a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. She is the samurai of tidy. So we're going to learn from the samurai warrior of cleaning up because this lady has got tidy going on. You might have seen her on the Netflix series or you might have seen her book that was sold a few years ago and still selling like hotcakes. Who doesn't need to Marie Kondo their homeschools? This might be one of the most common discussions that I have with homeschool moms. How do I keep my house clean? Okay, straight up, I'm going to tell you. Here's the secret. You're not. <laughs> you, you really can't. I know that when I first brought my kids home to homeschool, I somehow thought that I'm here all the time. So surely I will keep the kitchen tidy. I will keep the floors vacuumed or swept. Things will always get put away in their place, right? And exactly the opposite happened. I discovered that every last square footage in my home would be used for something. And because every square footage was used in my home, there was always something left somewhere. There are always Cheerios left in random corners so that ants can find them or that there's obviously erasers and pencils and all those homeschooly type things in the sofa cushion. Now where the scissors are, I cannot ever figure out where the scissors went. We can have routines to create less clutter, but there's always going to be more clutter because there's more kids, there's more going on, and therefore also more dirt, more mess. Today I'm going to explore Marie Kondo's book, How to Marie Kondo Your Homeschool, so that we can have less clutter and possibly, maybe, more clean. I know the experience of how a cluttered house relates to a cluttered mind. And this is the reason I have the conversations I do with moms, because I think that we're not really so concerned with the clutter that's happening in our homes. Well, I know, just hold on for a second. You're probably thinking, of course we are. But we're not so much concerned about the clutter in our homes as much as it's a reflection of the clutter that's going on in our minds. And we're trying to organize what's outside of us so we can feel less cluttered inside. I know that the first thing that I did when my husband would take our kids away for an afternoon so that I could have a little bit of quiet, which by the way, happened very irregularly, I would actually tidy for about 20 minutes. So yes, in that rare spare time that I am alone, I tidy. I know other homeschool moms will tell me not to because why waste time tidying when you really don't have that much time alone? But for me, that tidy house equals a quiet mind. And I first need a a sort of tidy to enjoy my quiet home. So I'll go throughout the house, put things away, sweep it up, because I know that it will indeed be quiet and tidy for a solid 
hour. (laughs) Kondo says we don't need to tidy when we quietly work at disposing our excess continuously, though. And this is where Marie Kondo comes in. She tells us to throw stuff out. Her primary principle of tidiness might sound a little too sentimental for my taste, though. Because she says to take each item, like every item, in your hand and ask, how does this item spark joy? If it does, keep it. If it does not, dispose of it. Sounds wise. And um, we'd probably own very few things with that guidance. Kondo says we don't need fancy storage units to get tidy. And I'll add, we don't need to increase the share price of Rubbermaid, though I will tell you, I certainly have helped them. We simply have to not keep everything that passes through our hands in our home, because less is more. I know that travel has taught me that, because it's taught me about being in the moment, and I don't require more than a backpack of stuff to travel through life, no matter where we're going. And we have done this with our kids. When we had four kids and we went on a trip a few weeks to Italy, we each had a backpack and not a thing more. Of course, I learned how to do that because I did significant trips to rural Africa, which meant four or five plane flights and hours and hours and hours of driving from one place to the other with four kids, two adults, and way too much luggage. So a backpack really is all you need to travel through life. Do I have more than a backpack? Absolutely. I want my life, though, to be more than just organizing my stuff and my kids' stuff. Can I hear an amen? If we love what we own, we can actually get on with living. Kondo suggests putting every piece of a family member's personal belongings in one closet. Can you even imagine? When we're heading out the door, I like to know that dirty boots have a home. It's called a mudroom. That the swim bag has everyone's swimsuits ready to go, you know, for swim lessons. In the mudroom, there is a canvas bag for my collection of international canvas bags, because every time I travel somewhere, I buy a canvas bag and it's in the mudroom. My kids are lucky to have their own rooms, so I keep a basket on the stairs and I toss things in there when, you know, stray things like pieces of Lego or stray sweaters or golf balls or socks, makeup, ponytails, you know, like all the things, whenever they get lost on the main floor, I toss them into that basket. Um, P.S. I don't know if you have a mudroom because I haven't always had a mudroom. And I know that everyone also doesn't have, have a mudroom. And there is always a way to create a stacking basket space right beside the door for the necessities of moving in and out of our homes. And that is the one place that we really want to Marie Kondo our lives. So if the kids don't need six pairs of shoes, get rid of them. Kondo, Marie Kondo suggests it's therapeutic to get rid of stuff because it helps us process our pasts and our garbage of our childhood. But true confessional, though I have done that in spades over the years, got rid of all sorts of different things. I just can't part with certain things from my childhood, like my Cabbage Patch dolls. (laughs) Okay, don't ask. And yes, I have three and I am clearly a 1970s, 1980s kid. Um, I can't get rid of my report cards. Is that not the funniest thing ever spoken from a homeschool mom who doesn't give report cards to her kids? I definitely can't part with my children's baby memorabilia. And therein lies my excessive Rubbermaid purchases. Maybe the grandchildren will use them, right? I'm interrupting this episode to let you know that I am offering you a free grappling with homeschool overwhelm checklist because I've learned this about our untidy homes. They are almost always a reflection of our minds and we are grappling with overwhelm. Too much going on, maybe too much stuff. This checklist will help clarify what is your source of overwhelm. 
You can find that guide to grappling with overwhelm checklist over on my website and a whole bunch of other free resources for the homeschool mama at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. Now back to the episode. What should we do with all that extra stuff found in the recesses of our storage rooms and closets and desk drawers and kitchen drawers? Should we sell it? Should we give it away? I find joy in giving it to someone who values it. And I find no joy in hovering over internet sales sites in hopes that I'll make 15 bucks. Give it away is my go-to. But I'll tell you something. Sometimes I want to give something away and I'm like, yeah, surely this is a valuable pair of sweatpants that my child has worn for only three months because they grow so fast. And yet I put all the things that my kids don't want or the things I don't want into a box in my car and I leave it there for a couple weeks. And here's the thing. When it sits in that car for a couple weeks, I discover nobody would want this. I'm going to give this away to somebody who is just going to throw this out so I can throw it out. There's a distance there, putting it in the box, in the car, and waiting until I decide whether or not it's actually even worth giving to someone. I would pay money to visit Marie Kondo's home. I really would. Apparently, she doesn't keep papers either. What does that even mean? No papers. I'm a writer, so I've got papers in stacks in my study. So many ideas written on so many papers because I'm going to write a post or I'm going to create a piece of content or I'm going to use this as part of a course or I'm going to something. But I got so many papers and I'm not even talking about bank statements, receipts, warranties, pay slips. How about kids artwork? I'm the mom that keeps all the kids artwork. So she owns everything uh, that belongs in just one closet. Everything she owns in one closet, I am in awe. And if you wonder if she has children, yeah, she does. Marie Kondo and her husband Takumi Kawahara are proud parents to three wonderful children. Dang, girl. There is obviously a whole lot of work to her approach taking every piece of clothing in the house and laying them on the floor. That's how she does it. Six people in my home times two seasons of clothing, spring, summer, or fall, winter. The thought of that clothing mountain? Uh, no. Though I have often heard from others that they've noticed I don't own many pieces of clothing, I can't imagine culling it still. I did take away from Kondo's book a different way for folding socks. Yes, sock folding. No stretching the cuffs, just fold them in half on each other like a rectangle. I have incorporated culling the house a couple times a year. Kids go through toys and books and all play things very fast. They shift from one stage to the next. So why not spend maybe a couple hours, one month before Christmas, pulling out the things that the kids don't use anymore and sharing it on a community board or on a Facebook group and letting people know that you have certain things available if they'd like to have it for their kids for Christmas before the new homeschool season, which is assuming, of course, you're not an unschooler and just seasonally unschooling all year long. But the typical school season, that time of year around July, when you start seeing advertisements for school supplies, That's the time of year that you're probably at your most relaxed and you can spend an hour or two with your child or without going through their room and deciding, do they even fit this stuff anymore? And the answer is usually no. Unless you have a child that's younger, you're probably going to let some of that go. Their pants are about a foot too short. It's time to get rid of clothes. They can have a fashion show. I know my girls love that. My son really does not. But they could have a fashion show and show us all the different outfits in their closet. Of course, there is one other thing that we need to cull. And girlfriend, I am a very organized hoarder when it comes to this. That I love to keep my kids' artwork. Well, it's not just their artwork. I also have all of their Matthew C. workbooks over the years. Yes, I do. Why? There's something about the memory connection with them 
And I know that some people create a bonfire at the end of the year and they throw in all of the books that they've used or workbooks or all the extra papers that they used. You could do that. Or you could invest in Rubbermaid as I have. But it's an opportunity at a certain time of year, the end of your typical homeschool year, to look at all the things you've done over the course of the year and write the things that the kids did in a portfolio This is something that I've done every single year. Gather up the things that they have written or drawn, or maybe there was a workbook, or there was some story that they wrote, or you name it, I've gathered it and put it together in a neat portfolio. I did this for one reason, because it helped me to see how much my child was learning over the course of the year. A very useful tool for me and also a lovely memory. So that's an opportunity for you to go through your homeschool space or to go through all the papers that you've collected over the course of time. Those are the three ways that I learned to cull over the course of a year. Do you know that Marie Kondo suggests that you go through your old clothes? I call those old clothes loungewear. Do you? Has she been in my closet? My recording studio is my closet. My recording device for this podcast episode is sitting on the loungewear. (laughs) I'm a homeschool mom. I don't want to get rid of a comfortable piece of clothing, even if it's pilled, even if it's not public worthy. I still keep it and wear it for leisurely homeschool days, which is most of them. Keep things because you love them, she says, not just because someone gave it to you. Well, that I can go with. I will keep my leisurely loungewear but I will not keep things because someone gave it to me. And I know it's a tricky one, isn't it? I guess that means that when we're giving other people gifts, we might assume that they also might not love those things as much as we might. Perhaps the original intent behind the gift was that the gift giver cared about us and wanted to give us something, which is beautiful. So we hold that item in our hands, give thanks for the gift that it was, and release it to someone who might love it more. Marie Kondo has an idea about books too. And if you are like most homeschool parents, we gather books. I had the privilege of borrowing books from a library like everyone does. I had the privilege of borrowing books from a homeschool mom's library in the first few years of my homeschool. And obviously I've also had the privilege of buying a lot of books. And I have. But I had the privilege of going to two public elementary schools when they were closing and taking whatever books I wanted. And that was a lot, a lot of books. So when Marie Kondo says you should take every book from every bookshelf and lay it on the floor and hold each one of them in your hands so that you can decide... Do I love it? Um, no, no, I cannot do such a thing. Way too much work. However, every year, along with all the stuff that my kids have written or worked on or drawn, I also go through the books and I say, oh, you know, there's only so many books of Caddy Woodlawn that I should really be keeping, or I don't need three copies of Anne of Green Gables series. And then I pass it on to someone. Usually the best place could be either a private school or the library. They will receive those books. And in my blessed community, there are spaces where I can slip books into these miniature book sharing, what should we call them, closets on the side of the road. This is the beautiful place where I live. We share even books. But Marie Kondo's idea about sifting through books did compel me to sift through the warranties box because what an overlooked box. There are so many warranties that I don't even own those things anymore or I am never going to return this thing. I am never going to look for the warranty for this thing. I am just going to replace it. There are so many warranties guides that I can delete. I had a six-month-old sofa that fell apart, so I was motivated to find the warranty. But Kondo is right. I am never going to reinstall appliances. So why am I keeping installation guides? 
And what are the chances that I'm going to get warranty work done on a $50 stereo? Okay, what about those instruction guides to the Toshiba computer that I purchased 15 years ago? Yeah, it can go. So that box got a whole lot smaller. There is not a thing that humanity has owned that Kondo hasn't discussed chucking. So if you want to learn how to simplify your home, if you're interested in purging your stuff, this book is your guide. Because her criterion for keeping something is the item has to give you a thrill of pleasure when you touch it. Uh, That's not going to be a lot of things that we keep. But that is a whole lot of holding. There was a period in my life very early in my 20s that I believed that I needed to be much simpler in my approach to my life. So I decided to delete all sorts of things, including my Joshua Tree album by U2. Big mistake on my part. But back then I had this idea that if I had nothing, I would be more content. I'd be more satisfied. And I've come to learn that that's not true either. We have things because we want to use them. We want to be surrounded by certain music. We want to have a Thanksgiving table with our grandma's dishes, or we want to house that ankle boot because we have repeated issues with our ankles and why would I repurchase one every two years? Or we have extra pairs of sheets because we're hosting guests in our guest room. Stuff has a purpose. We don't delete it just because it's stuff. But if we decide that the stuff doesn't have value or a place in our life, it's time to chuck it or share it with someone who could use it. Now, if you're thinking along with many homeschool moms that I'm just having a hard time keeping up with the dishes and the laundry and making sure kids are fed, I hear you. I get that. I want to give you a special word of encouragement. And it is this. I was taught to shine the taps after I washed my hands in the sink. I have a mom that knows how to rake a rug, not just vacuum the rug. I had a mom who paid us shine all the living room side tables. In other words, I come from a very clean home. And if you are thinking to yourselves, wouldn't that be lovely? I'll say this. Yep, sure would. I want you to know that I understand your desire for clean. Me too. Also, you're homeschooling, so your home is not going to be pristine for the next 25 years. And if you want a little hope and something to look forward to, you might actually check the calendar to see when your youngest child is likely to leave home and anticipate that, yes, indeed, in 2044, you will have a clean home. You're welcome. But until that time, let me encourage you that your kitchen has dishes stacked in the sink has splashes of dry, crusty milk, or Cheerios on the floor. If you've got mounds of clothes and dirty towels and dish rags, and you really don't know which one's clean and which one's dirty. If you've got a front entry space filled with shoes and boots and mud and hay, oh wait, that would be just me because I have goats. But if you've got all sorts of gross stuff all over the bedroom floor, it is your sign that you have a homeschool life. So embrace it until 2044. Unless, of course, you decide to hire a homeschool high school student to help clean your home. Been there, done that. After she spent the summer with me when my third daughter was born, I said to her, and I quote, my home will never be this clean again. And she returned Oh no, I'm sure it'll continue to stay clean. Turns out, I was right. Enjoy your messy homeschool life. Thanks for joining me today. I'd love to hear your thoughts or questions about today's episodes. You can head over to CapturingTheCharmLife.com and introduce yourself to me and tell me how you keep your home tidy. If you're looking to enhance your homeschool community with other supportive, authentic homeschool moms who want to show up on purpose in their lives, then you're invited to the Homeschool Mama Patreon support group. You can find that at patreon.com slash homeschool mama self care. I'm looking forward to getting to know you and your homeschool family. Until next week, I hope that you and your homeschool kids can turn your homeschool challenges 
into your homeschool charms. You got this, girlfriend. <laughs>